We're going to talk about the process of photosynthesis and cell respiration. So here we have a cell, let's imagine it uh, as a plant cell, and you're going to have chloroplasts in there. So let's draw our chloroplasts. It's going to be the site of photosynthesis, both the light dependent and the light independent reactions. So So we got both the light dependent and the light independent. Now, uh, let's remember what is going to travel between the light dependent and the light independent reactions. Well, uh, we're going to take ADP, it's going to travel to the light dependent reactions where it's going to become ATP. And then it's going to travel to the light independent reactions, break down, uh, releasing that stored energy, and the ATP will become ADP and then travel back to the light dependent reactions for the process to repeat again. Uh, we're also going to have the same thing happen with NADPH. So NADP plus is going to travel to the light dependent reactions where it's going to get built up into NADPH which is then going to travel to the light dependent reactions, unload its energy and then be recycled back. Now this whole process is going to take the breaking down of water. So we take two H2O molecules and they're going to get broken down uh, into uh, four hydrogens, four electrons, and oxygen gas. Now those four hydrogens and four electrons are going to travel and be part of the NADP to NADPH process. Okay. And this is photosynthesis. Okay. Uh, almost. We have to finish our light independent reactions. So if we come down, we have carbon dioxide, six carbon dioxide molecules are going to go through the light independent reactions uh, and become along with some of the H's from the NADPH a sugar molecule C6H12O6 Now, this whole process is driven by light. Light from the sun, which is going to come on to the light dependent reactions. Now, what is going to happen to our sugar molecule? It's going to travel into the cytoplasm. And in the cytoplasm, it is going to be broken down into two pyruvic acid molecules. Okay. And that process is called glycolysis. 
Now, when glycolysis happens, okay, we are going to have ATP molecules be formed from ADP molecules. So those ATP, ADP molecules are going to, through the process, be added, energized with their third phosphate to become 2-ATP. We're also going to have NADH come into play. So we're going to take two NAD plus molecules, and they're going to be broken down into, or not broken down, built up into two NADH molecules. Okay. And that process is called glycolysis. Okay. Now, glycolysis is then going to feed into the mitochondria. And the mitochondria is going to be the site of two steps, Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. So what we're going to see is our pyruvic acid molecule is now going to travel into the mitochondria. And it's going to travel to what we call the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, we're going to see our pyruvic acid get broken down even further. Okay. And it's going to get broken down into carbon dioxide. So what we're going to see is carbon dioxide is going to be released from the Krebs cycle. And that carbon dioxide is then going to be able to cycle back. So it'll travel back to photosynthesis and be used in that process. Now, in that process, Krebs cycle is going to make a number of NADHs, FADH2s, and some ATP uh, as our pyruvic acid molecules move through it. So we break down uh, molecules, and as we do, that releases free energy that can be used to then build up new molecules. So we broke down our pyruvic acid, and in that process, because we have two pyruvic acid molecules going through for each one of glucose, if we follow a whole glucose through, which would be two cycles of the Krebs cycle, what we're going to find is that two ADP molecules are going to get built up into two ATP molecules. Two... FAD molecules are going to get built up into two FADH squared molecules and not two, my bad, eight NAD plus molecules are going to get built up into eight NADH molecules. Okay. Now, all of those molecules need to travel to the other part of respiration, the electron transport chain. So we are going to have the electron transport chain Right here, okay. we'll call, we've got some proteins, call this the electron transport chain, ETC. Okay. So the FADH2 is going to come and drop off its energy, break down, releasing that energy, uh, and then be recycled back. NADH is going to do the same thing, come 
drop off its energy and be recycled back as it gets broken down. And the same thing is going to happen to this NADH molecule. It's going to travel to the electron transport chain, get broken down, uh, and then recycled back. Now, why do we do that? We do that process to try to get as much ATP out as we possibly can. So, what's going to happen while that is going on is approximately 30 to 34, I'm going to use 32, 32 ADP molecules are going to be converted to 32 ATP molecules. Now, in order for that process to happen, though, it needs oxygen. So oxygen is going to come in to the electron transport chain, and it's going to bind with these hydrogens that are present to form water. When that happens, that water can then cycle back and be used in the light-dependent reactions. So we've now taken light energy, converted it to ATP and NADPH, stored it in there as chemical potential energy, then transferred that chemical potential energy into sugar. Then we follow that sugar and it gets broken down. Uh, and as it does, it is temporarily stored in molecules of NADH and FADH2, which then are broken down in the electron transport chain which creates a concentration gradient, uh, which is going to then be used with ATP synthase to produce ATP. So uh, we have light comes in, and then energy stored as ATP uh, as our final product. We've got two ATP formed in glycolysis, two in Krebs cycle, and in this example, 32 formed in uh, the electron transport chain for a total of about 36 ATP coming from one sugar molecule that got its energy from the sun. Now, something that can happen in some cells, not necessarily in this plant cell, uh, is if there is no oxygen, then we cannot have NADH and FADH2 releasing their electrons on the electron transport chain without any oxygen to receive the electrons uh, and when that happens, the body needs a source of NAD+, plus because it will run out of NAD+, plus as all of the NAD+, plus, uh, has been converted to NADH, but the NADH cannot release its electrons on the electron transport chain. So sometimes when that happens, we'll see a special process. Uh, and in that special process, called lactic acid fermentation, uh, pyruvic acid would get broken down instead of going into the Krebs cycle it would get broken down into lactic acid now in order to perform that process you need NADHs so those NADHs are going to be used in this process okay and what is that going to create? It's going to create NAD plus molecules. So we've now freed up NAD plus molecules in the process of creating lactic acid, and those NAD plus molecules can then travel back to our cytoplasm so that glycolysis can continue to be performed so we can at least get two ATP out of the breakdown of sugar. Okay. In a human body, that lactic acid will then uh, be uh, travel through the blood to the liver so that it can be uh, recycled uh, and the process can continue. So zooming out, uh, there we see both photosynthesis on the left uh, and respiration on the right uh, with fermentation in the bottom far right. Uh, and here are all of the cell processes converting light energy into usable energy for cells to do chemical work, transport work, 